I uh, just kind of wanted to take it apart and see uh, what it looked like inside. So thanks. So I thought I'd go ahead and point some stuff out about these jumper cables too. Um, the uh, the alligator clamps actually they feel pretty nice, really. Um, you know, copper copper clamps and the wire gauge is here 105 C, so that's good. Um, 16 square millimeters. Uh, so according to the chart I just looked at, uh, 16 square millimeters is the same as a uh, six American wire gauge. So. Okay, boy was I wrong and wow am I impressed. It's actually a fairly uh, reasonably sized uh, sealed lead acid battery in here. Um, and like this little switch that you're supposed to engage it with, I mean, it's like, it's an actual switch, man. I'm, I, uh, I was expecting just to see, you know, like a bunch of NICAD cells in here, you know, for, for quick jump start and stuff. But this, this is actually pretty impressive, you know. I wonder if they got around any, like, government regulations, if, if they had declared that it had a lead-ass battery inside of it or not. Do not know. Um, but I don't see... Oh yeah, alright, so 12 volt, 17 amp hour. Um, I'll see if I can't find some more information on it and give you, like, you know, what you could expect uh, cranking amps to be out of this thing. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. And there's the, uh, the 12 volt, 800 milliamp internal charger that just charges the battery. Um, and you won't want to leave it on the charger, like, uh, charging instructions can get kind of complicated depending on what it is you're wanting to charge. Um, I think, like, uh, you know, it said you want to plug it in, like, every now and then, uh, which you do, because if a sealed lead acid, or if a lead acid battery is left uncharged, uh, for really any length of time, what happens is it builds up uh, sulfur on, or like sulfur, sulfuric, uh, something or other, on the lead plates, and then it won't recharge. Um, so, and that doesn't happen if it's got a full charge on it. Um, so that's a big killer battery. So you, you want to kind of keep it always charged, but then, you know, it also probably has some drain on it and whatnot. And the other thing is if you leave it plugged in, um, then basically you're just heating the battery because the, it doesn't have any way to store the electricity. So, you know, you're putting all 10 watts in the battery and then that's just causing the, uh, cause the electrolyte to heat up and, uh, you know, evaporate quicker over time. So it's better if like you find the perfect way to keep it like fully charged, um, but not plugged in all the time. Uh, but yeah, that doesn't happen. So, you know, it's just one of the drawbacks of life. Um, but here's a compressor, you know, I mean, it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look too shabby. I've used it for a little while. It works. Um, and this uh, board, whatnot. It's kind of interesting. I mean, I think it was probably a good decision for them to just use this off the shelf charger to charge the battery, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll take some more stuff out and look at it some more. Okay. Uh, well, here I'll flip it around. That'll be better. So, on further inspection, uh, we got these circuit boards out. I got the battery out. That's how big the battery is. Uh, there's my hand for comparison. Um, it's really kind of cool. It's just like, like, it looks like, you know, something like just a really basic... You know, circuit you'd use for like an Arduino or something, some robot. Um, it's got these tactile buttons and a little beeper and the resistors. It's actually all the electricity flows through this. Oh, darn. I wish I should have looked that up beforehand. Uh, I don't know what the value of that resistor is, but I know black is one. So I'll say like green's like four. So it's like a. It's like a 47 ohm resistor. Oh, it seems kind of high. I'll look it up later. Um, but, uh, 
And that'll keep the electrolyte from boiling off. It'll help keep it from boiling off so the battery doesn't get too hot. Um, and the voltage doesn't get too high. But this is the little USB charger board. And I got to say, I'm not real impressed with their use of hot glue here. It'd been nice to see something a little bit better than that. But seeing how this thing's probably going to be in your car, so it's going to be flopping around. I guess, you know, just a little bit of time, something's going to break there. It looks pretty basic, but, you know, it's not like it's uh, got to deal with uh, converting AC to DC or anything like that. It's just got to take the 12 volts plus or minus from the battery and change it into 5. So, that's that. And then it's got the little uh, pressure sensor for the compressor down there and the uh, LCD screen board. And this nice switch. So really, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. It, it's, it looks better than I thought it would look on the inside, and I think I kind of understand how it works a little bit more now. So I'll see if I can't find an amp hour uh, CCA rating for this battery, and I'll let you know about that. Um, and yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm going to renege on my previous statement that all the power goes through this resistor when it's charging the battery. I don't think it actually does. I think that's just like when it's fully charged or when it's slow charging. Because there's these two different uh, MOSFET things, I guess. Um, and it, that's just controlled by the microcontroller. So, you know, I'll assume they did things right. And uh, this battery has a, a little similar battery that I was looking at. Um, the one on Walmart was like $40. And it has like a CCA rating of 283 amps. So you're not gonna be able to start, you know, like a seven liter engine with just this thing alone and no battery in it. Or if your battery is like completely done, you're not gonna be able to start like a big truck or something. Um, now like a smaller car, yeah, you can probably do it. Like uh, my Chevy Cruze, I don't, I don't think it would draw you know, the starter motor might draw 200 amps, so it, this would be able to do it, but um, not for, you know, anything really big. Uh, but if, like, the battery is, you know, just a little bit dead, like you left your headlights on or something, and you can charge the battery back up with this thing, uh, then it'll probably work. But if the battery is, like, completely gone, it's not going to work. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, I was pretty impressed with it. I'll put it back together and show you what it looks like all back together again. And uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, so overall I'm pretty impressed with this thing. Uh, you know, like, um, as long as your battery's not completely dead, you know, it'll start whatever you want it to start, I'm pretty sure. Um, the stuff about, you know, 1,000 amp, peak amps, and 500 instantaneous starting power whatever that means i guess they mean starting amps that's that's not a yeah it's not accurate so you know i mean because we looked at the battery you saw how big it was you know the most you're going to get out of that thing is 280 uh, cold cranking amps you know maybe 300 you know cranking amps if it's not really cold outside and uh you know that's just it so like uh we own a 1969 Oldsmobile with a 455 7.2 liter V8. This thing would not do it. No way. But it's still pretty useful to have around. And I uh, definitely use it on my cruise and uh, anything else. So thanks for watching. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing.